What's going on, everybody? Welcome to a live coaching call. Today's going to be a really exciting reselling freedom coaching call because I'm going to be sharing with you 10 DVDs that sell for $75 or more. Now, I know some of you folks who maybe don't have experience selling DVDs, or maybe you think you know like how much DVDs sell for. Like a lot of people think DVDs only sell for 10 bucks, 15 bucks, $20. That's not true at all. Now I'll say the majority of media items out there aren't profitable. That could be books, CDs, DVDs, you know, maybe it's 1%, 2% of those items are really worth selling on Amazon. But out of those one to 2%, I mean, that's hundreds of thousands of products. And I have hundreds and hundreds of DVDs that I sell pretty consistently for over 50 bucks, for 75 bucks, for a hundred dollars. And really the key when it comes to selling DVDs on Amazon, well, number one, you've got to get ungated. So if you're not able to sell them because it says you're restricted, you're going to have to go to a place such as christianbook.com, buy 10 of the DVD, upload the invoice, get ungated. Now, once you're ungated, then it's a matter of going out and finding those DVDs. And I'd like to know in the comments, how can you find DVDs, right? I can, I can list off a bunch of them, but I want to know for the folks who are watching live right now, how do you find DVDs? Where do you think you can find DVDs to sell on Amazon? Of course, thrift stores, Goodwill, Savers, Salvation Army, mom and pop thrift stores, really any thrift store for the most part, there's going to be, I would say three to four categories that you're going to find in the most abundance clothing, right? You know, I don't sell clothing on Amazon, but clothing typically takes up the majority of a thrift store. And then you have books and then you have other media items like CDs and DVDs. And then you know, toys. Of course, there's other categories, but those are probably the most abundant categories that you're going to find at thrift store other than I missed glassware and pots and pans and stuff like that. Kevin says, my biggest DVD wins have been yard sales, thrift stores, and eBay. Yeah. Thrift stores and yard sales. eBay is my number one way of finding DVDs. So for the folks who are maybe new to, you know, this format of a live call in the last year alone, I've sold over $700,000 worth of products and 99% of them I source on eBay, DVDs, books, uh, electronics, home goods, office supplies, CDs, you know, you can pretty much buy anything you want on eBay. As long as you're able to sell it on Amazon and you're engaged and it's a safe product to sell. But eBay is a great method, you know, to find to find DVDs, local pickups, another great way to find DVDs. Um, I actually have a friend the other day who found over 3000 DVDs in a uh, storage locker. So you could go on websites. I forget what that one is called. Uh, I don't know, but if you Google uh, auction websites, there's different auction websites where you can bid on storage lockers. And that's another great, great way to find uh, DVDs, but they're out there and there's tons of them and there's thousands of DVDs that sell for really, really good money. Oh, big shout out to the number one, Steven Tower in the house. What's going on, Steven? Great to see you here, man. Steven's killing it with books, man. So proud of Steven's progress over, man, probably the last couple of years. I've seen Steven really, really grow and find his way. And I think that's important because some folks, they find their way in books like Steven. Some folks find it in DVDs. Some some folks find it in electronics. Um, so yeah, congrats, Steven. Great to see you here. Yeah, storagetreasures.com. There you go. Okay, perfect. So if anyone has any questions during this call, feel free to ask a question down below. I'll be checking the comments periodically, but I put together a list of 10 DVDs that sell for over $75. So what I want to do is I want to go through each one of those DVDs. And I want to analyze them with you. I want to share with you what the title is. Um, you'll be able to, uh, you know, write down the ASIN and keep track of it. So maybe if you see it out at a thrift store or if you buy from maybe Amazon to Amazon flips, or if you buy from eBay to Amazon flips, you know, keep track of this DVD and be on the lookout for it. I feel like half the battle, obviously, if you're out thrifting and hitting garage sales, scanning is the, the number one thing you could do. But sometimes there's so many DVDs. You don't have time to scan them all. So a lot of times it's like you recognize, oh, Elvis, oh, an Elvis DVD, or you recognize a specific series or a specific, you just recognize an image, a picture. And when you're out flipping through, you're like, whoa, 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 I got to scan this. So Steven says, thanks, Steve. I also uh, find DVDs, also look for new DVDs at the thrift store. Exactly. And during this call, I'm going to get my screen share going. I'm mostly analyzing DVDs for new. So most of these DVDs are selling for over $75 new because that's what I sell mostly. I sell mostly new DVDs. There's a market for used for sure, but I would say it's a lot easier to find a DVD that's going to sell for over 50 bucks if it's new 
versus used. There are DVDs out there that do sell for 60, 80, $100 plus used, but I would say they're they're much more far and few in between compared to uh, new. So, all right, let me get this screen share rocking and rolling and let's have some fun. So I've got this list. I've got each one of these hyperlinked. So I'm going to click into them and I'm going to share with you these different titles. And uh, if you've ever sold one of these, let me know during the during the call, because I've sold a lot of these. Actually, most of them I've sold before at least once. All right. First up, good old Elvis. Now it's cut off a little bit right now because I've got seller ramp on the left-hand side. So it's it's a little cut off. You can move this around though. So it won't be cut off. I'll move it over there for the time being. But this is uh, Elvis, the 68 comeback special. Now this is a three disc uh, DVD. So um, I've had a lot of success with Elvis. There's a lot of Elvis DVDs, keep in mind, that sell for a lot of money. There's also a lot of them that don't sell for a lot of money, but this one in particular sells really, really well. Now you can see that the buy box is at 116 new and check this out used. The buy box is coming in at $58 used. Now it doesn't mean you're going to be able to sell it for that, but you can take a look and you can take a look um, on Keeper right here. I'm going to pull everything off really quick. And you can see the buy box, the lowest price really between 28 to 56 used. You do see the buy box coming in between 38 and 70. I would say you're probably pretty safe selling this for somewhere between, I would say somewhere between 40 and, and $50. It does look like it drops down a little bit used. But if we take the used lowest price and the, the used buy box off and let's add in, that's the sales rank. So that's every time a sale occurs. But if you take a look here, you can see that the price was actually selling this product for around $200 and now it's around $123. Can anybody in the comments let me know based on this keep a chart, you can see that the price has tanked. Now this doesn't mean I won't buy this item, but I'm going to certainly keep in the back of my mind that the price is tanking and it's tanking for one main reason. And you can see quite clearly what's happening, but I want to know in the comments, does anybody see what is happening here? Hey, Joseph, thanks for your time. Appreciate you, brother. Yep, Kevin is 100% right. Increased number of sellers. So many times more often than not, if the number of sellers increases and the sell-through or the number of sales doesn't increase at that pace or more, a lot of times it's going to drop in price. And I'm using seller amp right here. And you can see this is selling about 24 times per month. You see that under estimated sales? The best seller rank BSR is 72,000. I pay more attention to this middle number. I don't really care about the, the sales rank. I mean, I'll look at it. It's it's kind of, it's a good thing to see. If I see it's 150, 160,000 rank, usually I know it's probably only selling maybe none to two times per month. So it's, you know, it's kind of there for, a, for a, a specific type of measure in a sense, I guess, to get an idea. But about 24 sales per month. And you can see that the lowest offer is coming in at 116. And then it goes to about 123. There's a good chance these guys, the, the lowest three will probably sell out and it'll probably jump back up, especially since it's selling 24 times per month. And you can see that there's a history of this selling for about 199 bucks. We could open this up over the history of this and you can actually see back here, look at this, look how consistent back in 2017, 90 bucks jumped up to about 150. And then look, the number of sellers really spiked up around 2020, 2021. And look what happened. The price dropped down. And then the, the number of sellers kind of dropped down a little bit right down here. And they actually stopped giving the buy box for quite a bit of time and the price spiked. And now the price is coming back down again, because you can see the number of sellers jumps up, but there's a pretty obvious pattern here. Can you see what this pattern is? Number of sellers goes up and then boom, sells out. Number of sellers goes up and sells out. And the reason why it's selling out when the number of sellers goes up is because the price is tanking. And this is a DVD that's in demand. People love this DVD for whatever reason, right? It's Elvis. So you can, you can time this right here. Like right now you can see it's pretty spiked up and it could keep going up more the number of sellers, but there's a good chance it's probably going to go down. And what do you think is going to happen guys and gals when this number of sellers goes back down to three or four, what's going to happen? 
We got 25, 26 people here. I want you guys to engage, interact. This is how you're going to learn. Even though you might feel like you know this, the more you put it out there, this is what's going to happen. Oh, I recognize that pattern. You're going to be that much quicker when you're outsourcing on eBay, which you really need to be quick or out, out at the thrift store. Yep. Joseph says the price will spike back up. Debbie says, I'm looking at an eBay and it's selling new for $16.70. I highly doubt it's selling for $16.70. Debbie, I don't mean that with any disrespect, but most likely you're probably looking at um, uh, maybe the wrong ASIN or you might be looking at it used. But hey, let's see if I am going to eat my words or not, because what I can do is I can hit search eBay and let's take a look. So I see the lowest is coming in at 24. Let's go new. So I see a 55 bid. Yeah, the lowest I see is about $90 right here. So one one little tip is sometimes seller amp um, is going to miss out on some DVDs because maybe it's not using the correct UPC. So let's see here. But the problem is when you type in the title, you see these are there's different variations. You have to make sure... Yeah, I don't see any at that price. There's different variations. So you have to make sure it's the same exact one by looking at the UPC here and also looking at the ASIN and also looking at the um, at the cover. So yeah, Elvis, 68 comeback. Okay, let's go on to number two. All right, so here is another DVD right here. This is, I believe it's a Blu-ray. Is it a Blu-ray? I'm not sure if it's Blu-ray. Maybe it's not. It might. Uh, yeah, it is a Blu-ray right here. It's called The Fall. And okay, so this is interesting. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take off Seller Ramp really quick. I'm going to refresh this. What's one thing that you notice about this Amazon listing that is a little bit off-putting? Now, I've sold this before in the past, so I know it sells. Um, you know, I've researched all these, so I know there's a, there's a sell through, but can you guys and gals tell me what is this missing? There's typically something going on here for new and something going on here for used, but I don't see it. Does anybody see that? I don't see any comments yet. I'm going to go back and share my screen. I, I lost the chat for a second. Okay. There we go. No, I don't think you guys recognize it. Or you guys aren't engaging, so I'll let you know. There's no buy box. There's there's no new buy box and there's no used buy box, at least for me. Um, it could be different maybe where you live. A lot of times, just so you guys know, the buy box differs all over the country. So Kevin might actually see a buy box. I'm not seeing a buy box. Kevin actually might see a buy box at 55 and then Amanda might be seeing it on the other side of the country at 49. The buy box, you know, it changes based on where you are. Um, but this is what is known as a suppressed buy box, okay? Now, in my opinion, the reason why Amazon suppresses a buy box is there's something they don't like about that listing. Maybe the price is too high, um, typically what it is, or I guess it's just not something they, they really want people to buy. Like they're not going to help us sellers to sell it. So when there's a suppressed buy box, you got to be careful. Like for example, typically I don't like to buy items from eBay to Amazon, uh, less than a 40% ROI. If it's a suppressed buy box, sometimes it's 50, 60% I want for a minimum just because it's suppressed. When there's no buy box there, it's it's more challenging for uh, buyers on Amazon to buy it because they can't just hit that button. They have to go in, they have to look for a seller. You know, They have to click see all buying options. Okay. So this item is actually selling, but it's slowed down significantly. You see how it was, you see this green line in here? You saw it's really moving around. Boom, 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 sale, 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 sale. And now look, if you look at the last month, look how much slower it's getting. Why did it get so much slower? Why did the sales slow down? Well, there's a couple of reasons it slowed down. It looks like the buy box was around 120, 130, and then it jumped up to about 145. So maybe Amazon didn't like that. You can even see the lowest price was a bit lower down here and boom, it popped up. So I don't think Amazon likes the price. Also, oh, obviously, can anyone tell me why the sales slow down a lot as well? This is right in your face. Sometimes folks will look at a listing and be like, oh, the rank is high or look at, look at the green drops. It really slowed down. This is obvious. Why did it slow down? There was no new offers on it. 
So people are buying this used. I do see some drop-offs, but it looks like people want to buy this new and there just weren't any new offers. Look at this. No new offers. There was an offer. Boom, sold. Boom, sold. Gone. No offers. Boom, sold. This is actually a great item that I would that I would pick up because I would be very confident it would sell because there's um, there's demand for this. Let's pull up Selleramp real quick. Let's see how many sales are going on per month on this item. 15 sales a month, 42,000 rank. Typically with DVDs, I'm looking to stay under 100,000 rank. Um, I'm usually avoiding DVDs less than 20,000 rank, especially if it's less than 10,000. I will do some research and look on eBay to make sure there's no seller selling like 10, 20 copies because a lot of times those can be counterfeit. Um, but my sweet spot, I would say is like 30 to 80,000 rank, um, under 100,000. Um, you know, solid. Once you go over a hundred thousand, I'm really diving into the keeper charts and I'm looking at the number of offers. I'm looking at the history. I'm trying to determine the true intrinsic value. And I'm also trying to determine, okay, if I buy this item, how long is it going to sit? How long is it going to sit for? Because that's the whole thing when it comes to scaling an Amazon business, if you want to make more money, you've got to sell more products or you have to raise your ASP or you have to improve your sell through rate. So I'm always asking myself, if I put my money into this DVD or this book or this electronic item, how much money can I make? But also how long is it going to take for me to get my money back? Because if I put $30 into a DVD and I want to sell it for 70 and maybe I'll make 25 profit, um, if it takes eight months, I could have taken that 30 bucks and put it somewhere else and flipped it five or six times and made four to five times the amount of money. So this is an interesting item right here. Um, let's take a look at the market and see what's going on here. I'm going to click see all buying options. Let's take a look at, oh, there's no, okay. Yeah. So there is no, there's, there's no new offers. There's actually used offers. Look, starting at 143. This is interesting. Yeah. Look at that. There's no new offers here. One thing I like to do is go to data buy box statistics. And what I'll do is I'll open this up over the last 90 days. And if you take a look here, all these check marks are FBA sellers. The people who don't have a check mark, that's a merchant seller. But I can see what they won the buy box for. And since they're gone, there's nobody on this listing, they probably sold it. Express Martin, 126. Spring Herald, 128. Win them all, 120, 124, 119, 119. So I can get a feel for what this is selling for. And that's new. It's really interesting the used price is so high. You could also take a look at the used buy box and look, some of those sellers who were selling it new, I also see them here selling it used. Look at this thing selling for 70 to up to 120 bucks used all day long. This is a very interesting uh, DVD to be on the lookout for. Let's go back to price history and I'm going to take away new and I'm going to take away the sales rank. And I want to take a look here at this used price. Look at this used price, how it spiked. And this is 100%, in my opinion, why the buy box is suppressed because Amazon doesn't like when the price goes this high. A lot of times they'll suppress the buy box. They're trying to control the market. They know that customers are happier when they pay less. And um, who knows? Who knows the metrics that they're tracking here? But look at that, how it's spiked. I would say used, the true intrinsic value is probably around 65 to 70. You can see the buy box here, around 90 bucks. 70, eh, 80 to 90 bucks used with the buy box and then boom, it spiked. And you see how this, this color, this pink color is gone. It's because they removed the buy box. They're trying to control the price. So when they take away the buy box, it actually, it kind of holds down the market a little bit because it makes it more challenging. Was that helpful guys? No new offers. Cheapest one I could see on eBay is 199. That's an item to add to the replens list. All right, let's jump on to the next product. All right, Walt Disney. I'll tell you right now, if you want to sell Disney DVDs, not only are you going to have to get ungated in DVDs, but you're then also going to have to get ungated in Disney. A lot of people, they'll get ungated by getting like a Disney Lego item. So they'll get ungated in Lego and they'll get ungated in Disney at the same time. Um, but this is a great series. DVDs right here, the, the, the Walt Disney treasures. Um, there's a whole line of these items right here. This one is on the front lines <laughs> and you can actually see that the buy box is at $99 right now. I don't see a used buy box. 
And if you take a look, I'm going to pull everything down real quick so you can just see the, the buy box. You can see back in July, it was around 95, then went up to 110, 120. You can see it actually spiked up during Q4. Let's see if that's a pattern. Oh, interesting, interesting. Does everybody see the pattern here? There is a spike that typically occurs. Boom, boom. Not a huge spike, but there's a little bit of a spike. I love selling Disney DVDs. I don't know if anyone else here does. A lot of times you might think, ah, Disney DVDs, mass produced, but there's ones that are older. There's ones that are rare. There's ones that are in demand. I sell a lot of Disney DVDs. This one right here, let's open up SellerAmp and let's see where the market is. All right. So we have one FBA seller at 99 and then it's all FBM, 103, 113, 133. Let's see what this is selling for the history of who's been winning the buy box the last 90 days. 99, 199. So I would I would really estimate this probably around a hundred bucks. I'm sure people have sold it higher in the past. Yeah, 120, yeah, 119, 107. Sometimes I buy items and I'll run the numbers as if I'm going to sell it for a hundred, but I'll list it for 120. Because right here you can see this item selling about four times a month. And you might be thinking, well, why is the rank at 20,000? Because a rank of a product is just a snapshot in time. Most likely this item just sold. It's probably more around like a 90 to 100,000 rank, but it just sold. So it probably dropped down to like 17, 18,000. But this isn't something I'd worry about in terms of counterfeits because this is a rare, hard to come across item. This is actually a two disc DVD. These things are these things are worth really good money. So if you ever find these, and there's a bunch of them you can see down here, Disney rarities. Uh Mickey Mouse 76. This is a fantastic line. There's a bunch of them right here. Look, Davy Crockett. Here's another one, Mickey Mouse. Look at them all. 85, 79. Who's finding this valuable, guys? If you come across an item like this, there is big, big money in it. Let me pull my screen down for a second, see if there's any comments in here. What's up, Stephen Gilnett? What's going on? We got BJ Menard. Love the picture of the cat. <laughs> love it. Love it. And I'd like to know in the comments, has anybody sold any DVDs recently for over 50 to 75 bucks? I'm curious. Let me know. All right, let's go back in. Let's see what we have up next. Uh, this is a DVD. I've sold this quite a bit over the years. Upstairs, downstairs. There's a lot of DVDs in this set. Um, I've sold this used. I've sold it new. Looks like the price has actually come down quite a bit used. The buy box is at 26 Upstairs, downstairs, 122. It's pretty consistent. If you take a look over the last year or so, it's around 100 bucks, jumped up to 130, 150. Then it tanked down to 92. It looks like it was just a couple FBM sellers tanked it down a little bit. But let's open this up and let's take a look right here. Yeah, the lowest is at 122, 127, 144, eight sales a month. I'll tell you right now, this DVD, it sells. Definitely a DVD to be on the lookout for. Uh, probably wouldn't sell it used unless I got it from a thrift store for a buck or two because this is a little bit bigger and bulkier. So, you know, that's going to add up a little bit for inbound shipping. And obviously fees are higher on products that are bigger and bulkier. Um, it's a big DVD set. It really is. Uh, but new all day long, we can actually go into data, buy box statistics, and take a look and see who's been selling this over the last 90 days. There's been a bunch of people on this listing, 127, 148, 122. Yeah, this is a great, great DVD, DVD to be on the lookout for. There's only one, two, three, four sellers on it right now. What I say, selling eight times a month, 57 dollar uh or 50 what did i say oh 57,000 rank so let's run the numbers on this let's say we found this on facebook marketplace or maybe on ebay for 60 bucks let's see if it would be something that i would buy so i'm going to put in my cost of 60 dollars what would i sell this for let's run the numbers real quick to see what i would actually sell it for looks like there's a pretty consistent price between 128 and 148 where's the market the market's at 122. Honestly, I would probably wait for those two to sell out. Happier Bookstore and FBA. Because after that is FBM and they're not really my competition. Again, if I go into data, buy box, 
Yeah, I mean, one person got it for 148. Yeah, you know what? It depends. For 60 bucks, let's just run it at 122 and see what that would look like. But I think I could wait it out and get more. So if I sold it for 122, I'd make $29.17 profit, 48% uh, return on investment. Okay, so I invested 60 bucks. I ended up getting back uh, 29.17. So that's a 48.62% return on my initial investment of $60. This is an item that would probably sell fairly quick. And if you're ever wondering like, okay, there's eight sales a month. Is it the new offers that are selling or the new? One thing you can do is add both of those, the new offer count and then the used and see which one's dropping off. So it looks like there was a good amount of used sales right here because it was dropping off. And it looks like used I mean, it's selling a little bit because you can see the staircase down, up, down, up, but there's a lot more used offers. This is one of the reasons I like new versus used because it's just a lot easier for resellers to get their hands on used products versus new. And what I've been, what I've, what have I been saying this whole time? The price of an item is typically dictated by a couple of things. Number one, the demand for the product. Do people want to buy it? Is there a demand? How many sales are there? And also how many of that product are on the market. If there's 20 versus like right here, you see there's 37 used offers, but there's only seven new offers. So there's a lot less supply, which helps the price stay up. That's one of the reasons I really like new, uh, new products compared to used, but used are great as well. But yeah, I would probably sell this for maybe one, 127, 128, maybe go third in line. Just say 127. And once they sell out, just depends, you know, how, you know, do you want to wait an extra couple of weeks or not? But that bumps it up to a 55%, $33 profit. That's an interesting flip right there. I'm curious. Let's see if anybody in the comments, if there's any comments that are coming in. What's up, Steven? Good to see you. All right. So it looks like people are just watching and hanging out, probably doing some listings, working. <laughs> All right. Let's move on to the next product. All right. Number five. This is how I feel sometimes in my reselling business, like a lonesome dove. <laughs> Uh, right here, this is a DVD. I've sold this quite a few times. Looks like the buy box is at $89.50. This is a Blu-ray item. There is a buy box for new at $89.50. Used is at $43.53. If we take a look, the used offer count was double the new offer count. There's about, what do we got? Six new offers and 21 used offers. Still pretty solid at $43 used. That's why I always say, keep your eye open for DVDs used as well. Even though most of the time they're going to sell for a lot more new, there's still some pretty good opportunities there. So let's open this up over the last three months. Let's put that sales rank in. And again, if I take everything off and you can see these green drops, sale, 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 couple sales. So, you know, it's really good to see all the sales that are coming in. The buy box, fairly consistent. Yeah, I do see it dropping off, but that's just an FBM seller tanking it. Pretty consistent, around 89 bucks. Let's go into the buy box statistics the last 30 days. And you can see all these sellers. Allmart GE, 89.57, 88, 89. NC Flippers, I see them on my listings a lot. A light Selections, 86, 88. So... Yeah, I mean, that's an $85 to a $90 DVD. You can see the lowest offer right now. They've got five at $89.50. So I'd like to know in the comments, what's the most you would pay for this DVD? Maybe you find it on Facebook Marketplace. Maybe you find it on eBay. Of course, at a thrift store and a garage sale, I don't see it being any more than four or five, six bucks. But if you were to source this online, what's the most you would pay for this? I want to know, what's the most you would pay for this new we estimated probably sell it 85 to 90 bucks. Right now, I would list it at 89.50. I would I would just be the lowest since they have five in stock. I want to move it. What's the most you would pay for this? Based on my numbers, so I've got seller amp set up to a minimum of a 40% ROI. It says the most I can pay based on my cost price uh criteria, 47.88. If I paid 47.88 shipped to my door, I'd make a 40% ROI. That's $19.16 profit. Now you might be thinking, Steve, I only got 500 bucks. I'm not going to be putting this much money up. 
Um, you know, I want to go for smaller flips. That's perfectly fine. Um, everybody runs a different business model. Um, some people are spending a hundred bucks a month in a reselling business. Some people are spending 500, uh, this upcoming, uh, next three months I posted in, um, in my eBay to Amazon masterclass group, I'm planning on spending 50 to 50 to 55,000 per month. Um, to get my sales up over a hundred thousand per month. So, um, there's levels to the game. Uh, there's people who are probably spending 300,000 a month. <laughs> so, all right, let's take a look at some of these comments. Claire says, this is very helpful. Awesome. Joseph says, do you send your DVDs to Amazon, uh, prep center? Yes. So, Here's a high level overview of my business, which has done over 700,000 in the last year. I have two sourcing VAs in the Philippines that are fully trained. I've been working with them for over a couple of years, two and a half years or so. They buy items on eBay through a variety of methods, uh, replay catcher, flip mine, um, reverse searching items, or front stocking. Uh, once they purchase those items, everything gets automatically pulled into our E2A master sheet, which is a software that, that we use to manage our whole eBay business. Those items then get um, added into our prep center's inventory, get sent to the prep center. They receive it. They, they already have our price ASIN, what we want to list it for. They list it on my behalf and get shipped out to FBA. And when it sells, Amazon will pick it, pack it, ship it then I get paid. And a lot of times I'm reinvesting a lot of the profits back in. I am pulling some money out. Um, for the last few months, I've been paying myself uh, between, I think, six to 8,000, six to 8,000 per month. And you might be thinking, well, Steve, you're doing 50, 60,000 a month. That's a small amount. Well, you have to understand, I'm trying to grow right now. There's There's been months I paid myself over 10,000, but you have to understand, I have a team of VAs that I pay. I pay someone to fix my stranded inventory, high pricing errors. I've got a prep center. Um, you know, I've got to pay for all the inventory. Plus, I've got to reinvest back into the inventory. So, um, but the cool thing is with my business model, I'm really only spending, honestly, you're you're probably gonna think this is a joke, but it's not for anyone who's, you know, in our eBay to Amazon masterclass, you've been following me for a couple of years, you know, I've documented it all. Um, I really only spend a couple hours a week on my business because I have a team that pretty much does it all for me. So, but that's been years of, of making mistakes and growing. <laughs> uh, Chris says, is there a replay? If you're a member of Reselling Freedom, so that's our membership group where we have anywhere from 20 to 25 coaching calls per month, uh, the replay is going to be inside of there. So, um, yeah, if you're a part of reselling freedom, that'll be up by tomorrow. And we have over 500 coaching calls in there, replay, so on and so forth. Joseph says, can you give us an idea of what the monthly wage should be for an eBay, uh, for, for a VA? Um, it depends my VAs after incentives and bonuses, it's probably between five to six bucks per hour. Um, I've had VAs that I've worked with that I paid more money for different tasks, but I would say a good starting rate is probably somewhere between three to $4 per hour to start. Um, and, uh, I give bonuses and incentives if we hit certain <clears throat> like sales metrics or if we hit certain profits. Um, but that's, that's what I pay. Uh, coaching calls at all different times, Chris. We have 10 plus coaches inside of resellingfreedom.com. So we have coaches that are experts in eBay to Amazon, coaches that are experts in book selling. We have coaches that are really good at stuff that I suck at, like all the different like little nuances of, you know, the fees and FBM and different things that, you know, maybe I'm not the best at. So we got people who flip shoes uh on Amazon. We've got, you know just a variety of coaches in there. So they're at all different times, different days, but they're all recorded. All right, let's move on before I lose my voice here. <laughs> all right. So here we have a DVD. I've sold this quite a few times over the years. This is the Tarzan collection volume two. So you can see the buy box at 54.99. You're probably thinking, Steve, why the heck are you sharing this with me? This is all about DVDs that sell over $75. Well, the lesson is all because the buy box is much lower. It doesn't mean that's what you should price an item for. This is selling about 15 times a month, 21,000 rank. And if you take a look, there's actually a good history of this selling for over 120, 130 bucks. 
And then the price tanked. Why did it tank? Can anyone tell me why it tanked? Well, actually, the price did tank, but it's actually a merchant seller because typically the lowest new offer is going to be a merchant. I don't think there's any FBA sellers on this listing. Look at this, how the, the offers pretty much you know, disappeared. This sold out. You typically expect the market to go up, but I'll tell you right now, if I came on this listing right now, I would not price it like an idiot. This guy, I'm not saying this guy's an idiot, but NY Bargain Hunter came in and sold this at 74.65. Big mistake. Big, big mistake. I would have, if I was on this listing, I would have priced this probably over 130, 150 bucks. If you go into the data buy box statistics, let's take a look. It's silly how some people reprice. Oh, look at this. 70, 69, 70. Man, I would have literally bought from all these people on Amazon and flipped it at a later date. Wow. Yeah. Some of these people really undersold this item. Yeah. This is an interesting item right here. I'd probably start listing this probably for over 150 bucks. There's a history of this selling. Let me open this back up. Where did all those offers go? Yeah. 130, uh, maybe not 150. That might be too high, but maybe 115, 120, 110. That's a bit more realistic. Yeah. This price really dropped off. Yeah, I bet you if I came in and put this up for 120, it would sell. I can almost guarantee it would. Matter of fact, I know in the past I've sold this for close to $150, probably somewhere back back there. I'm probably on here somewhere. <laughs> Let's take a look at the history of this. Yeah, this thing has been selling for a lot of money for a long time. It's so interesting how the price tanked when the number of offers came down. This is definitely an item I would sell for over 75 bucks. Do you guys see why I put this on the listing? Um, Joseph says, can you operate your business that way? You have it set up remotely from anywhere in the world. Yeah, you theoretically could. Um, as long as you have an amazon.com account and an Amazon business here in United States, um, you theoretically could be in the Philippines living there, uh, for 95% less, uh, expense compared to America and just be buying from ebay.com, ship it to a prep center in the States, and then ship it to FBA. Absolutely, you can do it. I know people who do that. Now, there's quite a bit of history of it selling at a lower price. Do you think that Amazon would give you a high pricing error? Possibly. That's a good point, Kevin. Possibly. But there's such a history of it selling for 120 bucks. I would give it a shot. You know, Might be an item where Say your cutoff is 40% ROI, Kevin. Maybe you want to be more at like a 60% just in case if you're running the numbers at 120. Let's see if this is available on eBay right now. I'm looking new. Let me take a look and see what's going on new. 74.95. I mean, I would probably want to pick this up if I wanted to take a chance, maybe at 50 could make an offer here for 45 plus shipping. You never know. I'm telling you, there's a lot of eBay sellers who the items just sit, 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 and they pick it up for a buck or two and they'll sell it for 50, even though they have it listed for 80. So if I bought this for 50 and this is a little bit of speculation because of the different, yeah, they picked it up for 50. I would try to sell it for 120. That'd be an 83% ROI. Worst comes to worst. If I had to sell it off for 80 bucks, I mean, break even would be 70. Yeah, $70.85 would be my break-even price. So considering the history, I would pick that up for around maybe 50 bucks. Give it a shot. Yeah, that's a cool, that was a cool example. I'm happy we brought that one up. All right, here's another one, Genesis. I don't know if I've sold this one before. I might have. Uh, looks like the buy box is at 65, 69, 87,000 rank, four sales per month. You can see the history of this is, up over 75. It looks like it's slowly been coming down in price. I'm going to guess the popularity. Maybe slow down a little bit. Yeah, it's slowed down a little bit. Let's see where the market is on this one. Yeah, here's the thing. FBM's at 69, 69. And then you have an FBA seller, this guy. This guy's on like literally every single. I wish I knew who this guy was. I'd like to jump on a phone call with him because he's on like so many of the same listings that I'm on as well. This guy is like the DVD king, this Achilles reel. <laughs> so is uh, Mr. Media. Mr. Media is on a lot of listings I'm on. 
So that's interesting right here. Um, four sales a month. You can see, you can see the trend. The price is coming down. You could wait for this guy to sell out and price it up at $77.99, $78.99. Let's look at the buy box history. 60, 69, 69. So yeah, I'd probably run the numbers around 70 bucks for now, considering it's only selling four times per month. Um, use only 21 bucks. So nothing special there, but that's another one. Uh, this is a good one. This is a good one to be on the lookout for on eBay. Right now, this is selling for $132. This is the Mel Brooks collection. This is a uh, a collection of DVDs, a Blu-ray. So this one, be careful who you buy from. Um, I've sold this before, but I'm very careful just because the rank's at 11,000. It's selling 43 times a month. So <clears throat> be careful who you're buying from. If you see an eBay seller with like 20 of them, I would stay away from that seller. Could be a good chance of it being a counterfeit possibly. But you can see this thing all day long, 140, 130, 140. It's even selling 70 bucks used. Really good one right here. Uh, this is this is a slower selling one, I believe. <clears throat> but this is one I've sold multiple times in the past for over 100. MacGyver, complete series, yeah. One sale a month, 109,000 rank. Looks like FBA is at 137. Yeah. Yeah. There's a good history of this selling right here, but it does get slow. The number of sellers has increased a little bit. Look at this. 93.55 used. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, this is a big set. This is a this is a hefty set. There's a lot of DVDs in this one. MacGyver, if you ever come across this one, be on the lookout for it. I've sold this, I don't know, maybe three or four times in the past. It's pretty solid. You do see the price. Look, you see how there's all this little slope right here. This is called a repricer battle. Luxy Brands and Five Star Depot battling it out. Look at this. Look at they took this price down from 175. Holy smokes, down to 125. They toasted that price. And it's because it wasn't selling. That's interesting. Definitely a good flip right there. And the last but not least, ran, ran with those profits, the Criterion Collection. I love going after Criterion Collection DVDs. A lot of them have a ton of value. I was actually trying to snipe out a lot of them on eBay the other day, but they bid it up too high. Uh, eight sales a month, 51,000 rank. Look at the number of sellers has really dropped off. Pretty consistent. And here you go, Achilles Reel on all the freaking listings. This guy too, Springfield Herald. He's usually on the listings. Look at this, 97 bucks all day long. Buy box is actually being won by, yeah, Spring Herald's Prosperity. That's a big DVD seller. This is a good one right here. Take note. Hey, if you guys are a part of Reselling Freedom, the community, I'm actually going to be sharing this document inside of there. So you'll be able to have access to all of those and copy the ASINs and add them to uh, your replens list. So before my voice gives out, I mean, I got to get my voice back up. Um, Victor says, Steve is dropping a ton of knowledge. Quick question. Do you open an additional eBay buyer account for your VAs? Good question. We just use one account. My account's up to, I think it's got like over 15,000 feedback now from, uh, from buying so many items over the years. But no, we just have one account. We do have another account as a backup. Um, but yeah, we just use one account. I give them direct login and password. Um, eBay does have like a, a share permissions feature, but it sucks. It's not really good like, like Amazon. So for what we needed to do, I had to give them the login and password. And uh, we have our credit card, like my credit card stored inside of the account. So they could only see the last four digits. Um, but I, you know, my VAs, I don't even call them VAs. They're, they're just part of the team. You know, I've worked with them for a couple of years. We built relationships and uh, we're close and I trust them. And, you know, they, they do a really good job. So we just buy on one eBay account and uh, yeah. Is Flipmine still viable? Or do these items disappear too fast? You got to be really quick on Flipmine. Flipmine's great. I mean, I still source on it, but you have to be really fast, especially DVDs. Um, 
So the way it works, just so you guys know, because I've been building my own software as well. A lot of people don't realize how these softwares work. Um, if you're going to source using Flipmine, you've got about, you're about 15 to 20 minutes late. So for example, say, just pretend this is a DVD. Say, let's just say that Gary, uh, excuse me, let's just say Steven lists this up on eBay and it's, let's pretend it's a DVD, right? And he prices this for 50 bucks. When it goes on to eBay, as long as it's in Flipmine's database, Flipmine doesn't have all the products, but as long as it's in the database, they're going to be checking about every 15 to 20 minutes or so. And if they catch that, it's going to show up on Flipmine about 15 to 20 minutes after it's been listed. Um, if it's not in their database, they're only tracking about 70, 80,000 DVDs, 2 million products in total. If that item, if this item is listed and it's a DVD and you're sourcing under the DVD category, if it's not in Flipmine's database, you are not going to see this show up on Flipmine. Um, but you got about 15 or 20 minutes. So there's a couple ways you can source. You can use Flipmine. Remember, you're about 15 to 20 minutes late. And once it hits Flipmine, you've got probably hundreds of people looking at it and refreshing all the time. So you've got about 30 to 60 seconds on a really great deal before it's gone. Another thing you can do is you can go into ebay.com, go into the DVD uh, category, and you can just keep refreshing it every minute. But you're going to feel like a drug addict. You're going to feel like a whack job doing that because there's like 20, 30 DVDs popping up every 20 seconds and you're not going to know which one's profitable. You know, um, I actually did that the other day for a couple hours and I wanted to test like if I could snag DVDs before it hit flip mine. And I did. But the reality is some of them I missed because when you're on ebay.com filtering newly listed and refreshing, you don't know what it's selling for. Like you could theoretically take your phone and scan each one, which I've actually done. Um, and the cool thing is you could snipe a lot of deals. You don't have to be super fast, but you have to be fast in the sense of like recognizing what a good deal is. So um, yeah, there's a lot of ways to go about it, but that's, that's for another call. But I didn't know if anybody knew about that. So yeah, like I said, Chris, thrift stores, garage sales, Facebook marketplace, eBay, there's some people who do Amazon to Amazon flips from merchants to FBA, uh, you know, library sales. You can find DVDs. There's a bunch of different ways to find them. I use eBay personally. Um, and we do a mix of our replan software, replan catcher, flip mine, and uh, like some storefront stocking stuff that we do. But it's mostly, we, we mostly just buy replans now. I would say 80% of our items are found with replan catcher. I would say 20% flip mine or so. But Flipmine's great. You just got to be fast, really, really fast. I know. I know. Stephen Tower loves Flipmine for books. I gotta bust his balls. <laughs> oh man, hold on. I gotta unmute. I gotta unmute Stephen, man. What's up, Stephen? How we doing, man? I just unmuted you. If you could, if you could uh, say hello. Uh, you, I don't know if uh, it, it'll go through or not. Um, here we go. What's up, dude? I was just typing a thing. It's so easy to find new DVDs at thrift stores. I just go through the big uh, shelf of DVDs and I look for the ones that are sealed. There may be five that are sealed. Yep. And then I take my uh, Scout IQ, and if it's, if it's $9 or left, less, I just leave it there. But if it's over $9... I might pick it up and uh, sell it for 50. Who knows? <laughs> I, mean, I look for BBC for one. They do well. B BBC DVDs, anything unusual. I, 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 I love those. And I, I was just amazed at selling one. I picked up the Salvation Army for 50 bucks that I paid three dollars for or two dollars for. I don't know. I don't it's know. the best, man. Anyway. Yeah, I do the same thing, man. I'm looking for the new sealed. I'm typically not going through scanning all the DVDs because oh. most of the used ones aren't worth that much. I know. I know. And I've got hundreds of DVDs I thought I'd sell on eBay. And then when they raised the uh, media mail price, it got unaffordable to even sell them on eBay. It was you spending five dollars just to mail the darn thing <laughs> and it's and so i i've packaged them up to sell a bulk of 44 in one box for 20 dollars 
Nobody wanted it. So now I'm going to go to the thrift store right after this call and donate them. And in my process of donating, uh, I mean, going through the DVDs last night, I found about 30 that I can sell as used and make a, maybe 3 or $4 each. And I figured, yeah. what the heck, if I can make 3 or $4 each on those 100 DVDs, that's better than donating them. But these other ones that are, are minus value or 50 cents, I don't want to fool with them. Yeah. I, I, they're just taking up too much space. And I, I'm going to donate them today and oh, <laughs> I get a 20% discount at Savers for that. But it's Tuesday. Us old guys get 30%. Hey. And so I'm going to run into the Savers after I donate and pick up some books and and look at the DVDs. But that's that's the plan for today. Love it. Love it. Well, good luck. Keep us posted. Thanks for coming okay. on. And, uh, and I'll say it, it's totally true. The used DVDs, you know, I don't want anyone to think all because I was showcasing new today that used are bad. Used aren't bad. I actually just sent in a bunch of used recently. And you might be thinking, Steve, I thought you only did new. Well, one of the downsides of selling on Amazon is you could sell a new DVD and the uh, customer can take your $130 DVD, open it up, watch it, have a good night eat some popcorn, get some oil all over it from the popcorn and send it back to you used and get their money back. So what do I do? I'll sell it used if I can. Um, but similar to what Steven mentioned, you know, I'm not going to send it in to make a dollar or two. If it's, if it makes five, six, seven, eight bucks, um, you know, I'll send it in used. Now when I'm, when I'm sending shipping in used DVDs, a lot of times I poly bag it just because I don't want it opening up or, um, it looks like Steven's nodding his head too. I'll just throw it in a, in a little five by seven or so poly bag and slap a suffocation warning on it. If, 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 you know, you could get them with suffocation warnings on it as well. Sometimes it's covered up. Yeah, exactly. Just like Steven's showing and, uh, ship it out. Same with CDs, but used they sell, but again, for me personally, and you have to understand what I do, isn't the best. What Kevin does, what Steven does, isn't the best. We all do. Yep. Are those the uh those might be the F and oh, those are the suffocation warnings. Yep. Um you got to run the business the way you want to do it. Um, I'm really focused on high ticket flips now. Um I put out a post, you might have seen it on Facebook or Instagram. In 2023, my average selling price, known as your ASP. So that means if you take your total revenue and divide it by how many items you sold, um, like for example, say you sold 10 items the whole year for a thousand bucks, you would take a thousand divided by 10, you'd have a hundred dollar ASP. In 2020, in 2022, my ASP was around 36, I believe, 2022. So that means, you know, take the thousands of items I sold divided by how many I sold, $36 per sale. 2023, I moved it from about 36 to 38 up to $56 um, for my average selling price. And then in 2024, I know we're only you know, six, six months in I'm over $120. So I can only share what I do. Uh, <laughs> that's what I do on my YouTube channel and the groups. You know, I share what I do. doesn't mean it's the best. doesn't mean DVDs are the best. Um, but you know, this is what I do. And DVDs are probably only probably less than 20% of my inventory. Now I've really made a lot of changes. I used to be all books and then I used to be all DVDs. And now I'm, I would say I'm the majority of my inventory that I flip is probably over 50% electronics and office supplies. Probably over 50%. Why? Because they're higher ticket and they sell a lot faster. So I'm trying to move my inventory and I'm trying to utilize a big ball of capital. And uh, there's just a lot of opportunities out there for electronics. Plus, to be perfectly transparent, um, it's a higher risk selling electronics and selling off supplies because you're spending a lot more money per unit. Uh, the return rates are higher and also a lot of people are gated. So, you know, as you grow and develop your business, for me personally, I always try to find ways that I can get an upper hand on the competition. And by playing with items that are riskier, uh, in a sense, because of the reasons that I mentioned, kind of gives me a little bit of a leg up. So that's where I've kind of been focusing, but you, everyone's going to notice over the over the next one, two, three, four, five years, your business is going to evolve and it's going to change and you're going to make 
different decisions in terms of lower ticket to maybe higher ticket to maybe, you know, only doing books or for example, Steven made a big decision recently. And I know he's been going really hard into like doing Amazon, Amazon flips. Cause I know you used to be big in the E to A and flip mine. And now I think you're utilizing mostly book mine now, Steven, I believe. I think that's what you're mostly, uh, you don't, let me uh, give you a little, let me unmute you real quick. Yeah. I think you're all book mine, right? Yeah. I'm all book mine. And Jody um, got me interested in CDs. I'm, I'm on, I'm gated on CDs. But this is FedEx just sent this to me today. Oh boy! I've got a package of ten CDs from Christian Books, and I will get ungated on CDs <laughs> because Jody snuck in some CDs into his list, and I thought, well, by golly. I can do DVDs and CDs and books. Still, 95% of everything will be books. Love but it. why pass up a DVD that sells for $50? Why pass up a CD that might sell for $50? I mean, holy <laughs> cow, there's just so much out there. <laughs> and, and uh, well, anyway, it's... I'm just excited about getting to the thrift store. But <laughs> other, I'm excited for you, find. man. But I, I'm being more selective. If if it's only a three dollar profit at the thrift store, I'll just pass it up. Yeah. But uh, but invariably, I'll find a thirty and forty dollar profit. It's just amazing what you can find. But still, I, I use BookMine a lot. BookMine yeah. has has become my flip mine. <laughs> Whatever. And, and, and just so everyone knows, BookMine is not an eBay to Amazon software. It's an Amazon to Amazon software. So Stephen's buying from primarily merchant uh, Amazon sellers. And, and yeah. And I also link to BookFinder. That's where I go. Still, about 95% is on eBay. Yep. I've found some great values there, even cheaper than Amazon. So, anyway. Love it. Thanks for okay. sharing, Stephen. Okay. Chris asks, uh, Steve, what's your biggest mistake and best choice in your reselling career? Uh, is Stephen a coach? He's cool. <laughs> uh, yes, I am a coach. Um, I would say my biggest mistake... And I, I hate to call it a mistake because every everything you do in business, it's a stepping like the way I see it is it's a stepping stone. You don't know what you only know what you know and you don't know what you don't know. So you've got to start somewhere. And I when I when I do something in business, when I was much younger and a bit more immature, I would think I don't want to do this because I don't want to do this forever. But that's not the case. Like when you get into business you may do something. And my biggest mistake was selling on eBay for way too long. <laughs> uh, just to put that out there. Um, but I would say my biggest mistake was selling on eBay too long and hanging out in the thrift stores too long. Um, everybody told me doing eBay to Amazon or doing online arbitrage and all this, you're not going to make any money. You're going to get kicked off, da, 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 da. And the reality is people have a hidden agenda. And a lot of times people only know what they know and they don't know what they don't know. And uh, I wish I would have started doing eBay to Amazon and Amazon to Amazon much sooner um, just because of the freedom that, that, that it gives you. But uh, I don't have any regrets doing thrifting and selling on eBay. I learned a, a lot from it, but um, I recommend people start with thrifting, but I did it for way too long. And uh Man, I, I I just wish I learned about this a lot sooner. Um, Steven says I've sold 800 books on Amazon this year and I've had 10 eBay sales. <laughs> yeah. And that's why you're able to source so many deals from eBay to Amazon because, and I used to sell on eBay for the longest time. eBay, they are so annoying with their algorithm. Literally, if you are not kissing their butt every single day, listing every single day, giving the CEOs back rubs and head massages and really kissing their you know what, it's like they'll just not, you just don't sell anything. They literally hide all your listings. It's, I don't know what's going on. That's why I love Amazon because everything is under one ASIN. So if there's 20 different sellers, they're all under one, 
ASIN, which means all the traffic gets driven to that one listing. So really you just have to focus on price. You don't have to focus on pictures and listing description and you know feedback and all these things really don't matter as much. Obviously they play a little bit of a role like feedback and stuff, but uh, yeah, um, that's why you could find so many deals on eBay. That's how I built an entire business buying literally from eBay and selling on Amazon because eBay sellers are suffering. I hate to say it. And it's some, it's funny. Like some people would be like, Oh, why are you like, there's an eBay seller selling an item for 80. Why are you offering 50? They probably been sitting on an item for five months. They paid $2 for it. Who cares? Like they could say no, but I'll tell you right now, my E2A master sheet, it integrates. So every time I make an offer, it integrates, like it pulls all the data in. We're getting probably 40 to 50% of our offers accepted. And sometimes it's 25, 35, 40% less than what we're asking. Sometimes I had a DVD the other day. What was it called? It's like Houdini or something ridiculous. I made a stupid offer just because like when I was analyzing the, the keep a chart, there was just a couple of things that sketched me out. I don't remember what it was, but I think it was selling for, I don't know, let's just say 50 bucks. I don't remember. And maybe they wanted like 25. I offered like something ridiculous, like 12 bucks. Just like, I don't even want this thing. Like I'll take it if you give it to me for like a stupid, they accepted it. They didn't even counter me. It's like, all right, I'm not going to send this to the prep center. I had it shipped to my house. Cause I'm like, is there something wrong with this thing? It was in perfect shape. I'm like, damn, I should have sent it to the prep center. Um, but yeah, Steven says I was reviewing my inventory on eBay. Noticed eBay also deleted many of the items I never sold. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. It's eBay. I think eBay is beneficial for certain products um, because Amazon, let's not lie. Like Amazon's really annoying in a, a bunch of different ways too, like stranded inventory and high pricing errors. And you send a box to them and it gets lost and you're just SOL. Like there should be insurance. Who was talking about this in one of the groups? I wish there was an insurance that I could pay for. Someone needs to start this company. So say Steven, you send a box of like $600 worth of profit to FBA I'd pay seven, eight, nine extra bucks to protect that box if it ever got lost. That would be great. I wish there was like shipping insurance. Does anybody know of anything like that? Because I wish it existed. Because you could do that like when you ship through like UPS and FedEx. I don't know if you can do that though. Like can you, when you buy postage through UPS, but you're buying it through Amazon carrier, is there an option to buy insurance? I don't know. Never heard of it. Maybe. <laughs> um, yeah. So- Hey guys, that's pretty much it for uh, today's call. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. If you enjoyed, please let me know in the comments. Um, I coach uh, typically every few weeks in the Reselling Freedom group. So we have coaches that are coaching typically every single week um, or at least twice per month. We have over 10 coaches inside of our resellingfreedom.com membership, over 500 coaching calls. All the replays are there. So uh, if you guys are interested in that, definitely check it out, Reselling Freedom. Dot com. Thanks, Bob. Thanks, Steven. We got two Stevens, one with a V and one with a PH. That's how my name is spelled as well. Steven with a PH. Thanks, Chris. Kevin, thanks for being here. Chris, yep, we send right to a prep center. All right, guys, have a beautiful day. Thanks for coming on. I'll see ya. Bye.